there comes a time in every boy's life when he has to become a man. This is because he's more capable of dealing with stressful situations that might arise in life. In this case, working on a Jeep Wrangler. The worst car in the world. Now while it's marvellous having two 70 series Land Cruisers to play with, I also made the silly mistake of getting a Wrangler, and it's decided to have some issues. And these issues are of the intermittent variety, which are the easiest ones to solve. So here's a rundown of those issues. Sometimes it cranks and doesn't start. Sometimes it cuts out in the first few minutes of running. Sometimes if this happens it starts back up. Sometimes it doesn't. When it's running, no smoke, funny smells or power loss. It's also previously thrown the low fuel pressure check engine light. That's this one. Once. When it's all running and warm, it's marvellous. For a Jeep. And one thing I've also recently noticed is that it's difficult to fill the fuel tank at the fuel station. When you're filling it now, you have to do it slowly, otherwise the nozzle trips. And that's the last piece of this puzzle. And with all these clues and ingredients, I can start working from the ground up and maintaining at the same time. So here's my theory. Prepare for some fantastic animation attempts. Now the fuel system goes something like this. There's a fuel tank with a filter on the outlet. And this supplies a lift pump. This lift pump provides relatively low pressure fuel to the high pressure pump, which gets forced through your injectors and makes your diesel engine rattle. If there's no fuel supply, then there's no starting, as well as potentially throwing a low fuel pressure code or two. Now the fact that there's no funny smoke smells or power loss tells me that the expensive high pressure pump is not at fault here. My symptoms point to a blockage before the lift pump, about here. And I think it's either a blocked filter or the fuel tank breather. Why though? Well, if there's suction in the pump caused by the fuel being used and not replaced by air, then the lift pump might not have enough berries to supply the high pressure pump. This means once it's running, it's fine. But when it stops, the vacuum sucks the fuel back through into the tank again. Anyway, enough talk and theories. It's time to do stuff. So this is where the Jeep hatred begins. I'm going to start by changing the fuel filter. Now the fuel filter is right here which isn't particularly unusual on a four-wheel drive. And obviously, the first step of action here, on any four-wheel drive, is to begin by removing the gearbox cross-member to get to the fuel filter. Thanks, Jeep. So I'll crack on with this and see if there's anything unusual. So naturally, that was stuck tighter than a certain religious demographic's wallet strings, which means that I've had to take out the whole filter unit. Now Jeep thoughtfully put all the fuel lines to disconnect above head height, so that you get a face full of diesel as you're taking out these fuel filters. So let's continue and see if there's anything wrong. So there's nothing immediately wrong with the filter, but to be honest I didn't really expect there to be, because if there was and it was blocking that much flow, then I'd have much bigger problems at the fuel tank. 
The only concern I do have is that it was fitted with the cheapest type of filter known to man. Sakura. Stick to card captors, because we don't like you in the car industry. Now I'm being slightly hypocritical here, because I'm about to fit a Ryko filter, and they're not that much better. You'd think they would have located it somewhere a little bit easier to get to. Like here. 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 And basically anywhere except the place they actually put it. Now that that nightmare filter change is out of the way, it's time to actually say something positive about Jeep, which is how easy it is to bleed the fuel out of the system once you've changed the filter. And here's how you do it. It's done. So next up is checking that fuel pressure sensor that threw up a code earlier. This one. And all you do to check that is unplug it, chuck some probes in, and see what resistance values it gets. Then you check them with what Jeep states. And the sensor seems to be okay. So for the last thing I'm going to do before I get a bit desperate is check out that fuel tank breather at the back. And to do that, I'm going to turn the car around. Now the last thing that I think is a contributing factor is the breather in the fuel tank. The issue that showed up is when you're filling the fuel tank, it bubbles back up and tries to come out and it trips the fuel pump nozzle. Now this is obviously not ideal, and if this is the case, it can also contribute to all the other problems we're having with the rest of the car. So the breather is somewhere inside. I haven't found it yet, so I'm about to. So here's the discovery. This one is the breather for the filler pipe. And it shouldn't have fuel inside it. So what it looks like it's doing is creating a vacuum, or it's just completely full of fuel. So I'm going to blow it out with compressed air and hope that it works. your engines. Now we find out if all this nonsense was worthwhile. <laughs>